81 years ago, as civil war raged in Spain and the shadow of the swastika fell gradually but inevitably across Europe, the people of London's East End took a stand against fascism. Here are five things to remember about the Battle of Cable Street. Number one, it was precipitated by an anti-Semitic show of force. What we know today as the Battle of Cable Street began as a march by the British Union of Fascists, led by their founder, Oswald Mosley, which was planned to take place in London's East End on October 4th, 1936. In the months leading up to the march, Mosley's BUF held a series of meetings in the East End and distributed pamphlets of anti-Semitic propaganda designed to inflame and exploit resentment toward the area's Jewish population. The route Mosley chose for his march would take him and 3,000 of his BUF black shirts right through the heart of the district of Stepney home to nearly a third of all the Jews living in London at the time. But Oswald Mosley's march didn't go off as planned. Number two, the fascists were turned back. When Mosley and his 3,000 fascists arrived at the East End, they were met by 20,000 counter-protesters. And that is the conservative estimate. Others count the number of counter-protesters there that day in the hundreds of thousands. These were Jews, Irish, socialists, anarchists, communists, members of labor unions, and people who were none of the above, all united under a single rallying cry, Mosley shall not pass. Opposition to Mosley's march had begun long before October 4th. East End Jewish leaders had begun organizing a resistance as soon as they heard about the march. Local residents and elected officials appealed to the British government to stop the march. A petition to ban Mosley and the fascists from marching collected over 100,000 signatures and was delivered to the Home Office. But it was of no use. The march was officially allowed to proceed. This left the anti-fascists with no option other than direct action. When the fascists found their original route through the East End blocked, they were redirected by police down nearby Cable Street, which anti-fascists had also blocked, fashioning barricades out of automobiles, building materials, and furniture provided by local residents and shopkeepers. When the fascists attempted to cross the barricades and force their way down Cable Street, they were beaten back. Some of the demonstrators carried improvised weapons made from chair legs or planks of wood taken from the barricades. Some hurled bricks, some used their fists. After encountering overwhelming resistance at every point they tried, the fascists finally gave up and turned around. The anti-fascists had won. Mosley did not pass. But though the Battle of Cable Street was a great day for the East End and continues to inspire those who fight against fascism to this day, it was by no means a total victory. Number three, the police effectively sided with the fascists. When the Home Office decided that Mosley's march would be allowed to proceed, it assigned 6,000 police officers to escort the fascists. The job of the police was to clear a path for the fascists, and they took their job seriously. The police were brutal and uncompromising in their attempts to disperse the protesters. Makeshift first aid stations had to be established to treat protesters who'd been injured by police. The protesters fought back, attacking the police with the same determination they showed to the fascists. When police attempted to dismantle the barricades, local residents pelted them with garbage and rotten vegetables hurled from the windows of their homes. Fighting between anti-fascists and the police continued well after Mosley and his black shirts gave up and went away. Ultimately, around 150 protesters were arrested. Police brutality in the defense of fascists wasn't the only thing to taint the victory of the protesters at the Battle of Cable Street. Number four, it briefly reinvigorated the fascists. Like his ideological descendants in present-day fascist movements like the alt-right, Oswald Mosley found a way to turn his humiliating defeat at Cable Street to his advantage. 
The at times violent resistance of the protesters, many of whom were Jewish, gave Mosley's BUF an excuse to double down on the anti-Semitism that had rallied many of its members to its cause in the first place. Hate crimes increased as the BUF began to focus its activities almost exclusively on harassing Jews. Mosley was also able to play for sympathy in the media, claiming that he and his followers in the BUF were merely attempting to exercise their lawful right to freedom of speech at Cable Street, and it was all those Jews and communists standing in their way who had started the trouble. Sound familiar? The BUF's resurgence continued until war broke out across Europe in 1939. In 1940, Oswald Mosley was arrested as a Nazi sympathizer and spent the rest of the war either in prison or under house arrest. The BUF was banned by the British government. So, all's well that ends well. Except, as we all hopefully know by now, that wasn't the end. And if there is one lesson from the Battle of Cable Street that we all must never, ever forget, it's this. Number five, opposing fascism is necessary and it works. Whether it's in the streets of London's East End in 1936 or the streets of American cities in 2017, fascism must be opposed. A polite fascist is not a peaceful fascist. There are no peaceful fascists. Fascism is inherently violent. Fascists don't care about freedom or equality. Fascists don't want to coexist. They want to dominate. Fascists don't want a seat at the table, they want every seat at the table. You may cherish the noble liberal mantra, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Fascists don't. Any defense of them, however rooted in enlightened principle, only serves to empower them. So let's follow the examples of the people of Berkeley, Boston, Charlottesville, and most of all, Cable Street. Be it online or in real life, in politics or among our families, friends, fellow students, or coworkers. Let's all stand together in the path of the eager and energized new generation of fascists and say to them the same thing that Oswald Mosley and his black shirts heard from the heroes of Cable Street. You shall not pass. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you got something out of that one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron of this channel. Thanks for watching.